All right, this is key to topic 21, part B, worksheet two. And on this worksheet, you're given this quadratic function. And we're going to write it out. So the quadratic function is f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 16. Notice that this quadratic function is in general form. So it's not, it's not vertex form, it's general form. So you're going, to have to, you, you're going to have to use the vertex formula to find the vertex. So also notice that you will have to find the x-intercepts as well. Okay. All right, so let's, let's uh, look at, at this one. So let's, let's go ahead and talk about the vertex. So remember, the formula for finding the vertex of a quadratic function that's written in general form is this. So the x-coordinate is negative b divided by 2a. And once you find the x-coordinate, you're going to substitute that value into x in the quadratic function. So basically, you'll be finding f of negative b divided by 2a. Now, before we substitute information into this formula, make sure you, you determine what A and B are. So really, all you need is just A and B. So A is the coefficient of X squared, so that's negative 2. And B is the coefficient of X, so that's 12. And so now, let's go ahead and find the X coordinate. So the X coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative B divided by 2A. All right. Now, uh, remember, this says the opposite of b. So b is 12, then the opposite of 12 is negative 12, divided by 2 times a, and a is negative 2. So I get negative 12 divided by negative 4, which is a positive 3. All right. Once you find the x-coordinate of your vertex, now you're going to find the y-coordinate. So the y-coordinate, you're going you're gonna, to uh, substitute 3 into x. So basically, you're finding f of 3. So f of 3 then will be negative 2 times 3 squared plus 12 times 3 minus 16. And so 3 squared is 9. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. So we've got to use the order of operations. So negative 18, 12 times 3 is 36, and then subtract 16. So negative 18 plus 36 is a positive 18, right? And then 18 minus 16 is a positive 2. So I found I found the vertex. So the vertex, the vertex is x, remember x, y, so 3, 2. So that's your vertex. So, so what that means is this now. So here's here's what we have. So in our in our coordinate plane, I'm gonna plot the point 3, 2. So that's right here. Okay? And if I'm gonna go ahead and make it, um, I don't even think that's even better, but 3, 2 is here. Alright, so that's a vertex. Alright? Now Remember, though, that A, remember, A is negative, right? A is negative. So, so I know that, that my parabola is going to be concave down. It's going to open down. All right, so since it's going to open down, I'm not going to write on here because I don't want to mess it up. But since it's open down, notice it crosses the x-axis. And you're always going to have a y-intercept. So always remember that. There's always going to be a y-intercept. Um, but I do have x-intercepts here because it does cross the x-axis. But it's going to be concave down, right, since, since um, A is negative. All right. Now, I want you to notice this. So in, so in our mind, we know this. We know that it's going to be concave down. We know that this is the vertex right here. It's 3, 2. And then the next part, they want you to find the axis of symmetry. So that's number 2. So the axis of symmetry, remember, is that vertical line that goes through the through the vertex. And remember, it's a vertical line. So that means that all these x coordinates on that vertical line are the same, and it's this x coordinate right here. Remember, though, that when you state the axis of symmetry, you must, you must say x equal, because that's how you name a vertical line, x equal. And then in this case, it says x equal 3. So x equal 3 is your axis of symmetry. OK? All right, so, so far we have this. So far we have that the vertex is 3, 2. The axis of symmetry is x equal 3. All right, I know that it's concave down, right, since, since a was negative. So it's concave down. All right, and then the next part I want you to do is to determine the x-intercepts. So let's go ahead and determine the x-intercepts. So the... Um, so that'll be, that, I think that's number four. So number four, remember, 
they're not asking the y-intercept here. It says the x-intercept, so be careful. So remember, to find the x-intercept, you're going to let y equal 0. So let's go back to our function. So here's our function right here. Our function is f of x equal negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 16. All right, so I'm going to let y equal 0. So when I let y equal 0, I get 0 equals negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 16. And then, and so now we, we got to solve this quadratic equation. So just use the quadratic formula. So remember the quadratic formula is negative b uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a, right? So let's just do that. So a is negative 2, b is 12, and c is negative 16. And so we're just going to substitute these values into the formula. So, so the x-intercept the x-intercept then will be the opposite of b, so the opposite of 12 is negative 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 12 squared, minus 4 times a, a is negative 2, now be careful, negative 2, times c, which is negative 16, all divided by 2 times a, which is negative 2. All right, now you got to be careful with your radicand, because you have a lot of negatives floating around. So you have a negative 12 plus or minus the square root of, now 12 squared is 144. All right, now let's think about, about what you have here. So remember, even though this says subtract, that means the same thing as adding the opposite. So you have a negative 4 times a negative 2 times a negative 16. So a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. Okay, so 4 times 2 is 8, and then uh, 8 times 16, just multiplying that out, you get 128. So you get 144 minus 128 all divided by negative 4. Okay, now simplifying this part, we have negative 12 plus or minus the square root of, and then 144 minus 128 gives us 16, all divided by negative 4. Okay? Now, remember the nice thing about this is that this is a perfect square, 16. So the square root of 16 is 4. So I get negative 12 plus or minus 4 divided by negative 4. And remember, at that point, since, since uh, this is now going to be a rational number, you split it apart. So you get negative 12 plus 4 divided by negative 4, negative 12 minus 4 divided by negative 4. And so now this, negative 12 plus 4 is a negative 8, negative 8 divided by negative 4 is a positive 2. So there's one of your x-coordinates. I'm sorry, your x-intercepts, excuse me. So that's one of your x-intercepts. The other one negative 12 and a negative 4 is a negative 16 divided by negative 4, which is a positive 4. So there's the other x-intercept. So those are your two x-intercepts, 4 and 2. All right. Notice, though, that I used the quadratic formula to find the, the x-intercepts. So my x-intercepts are 4 and 2. So that means that when I go here, now remember, remember this is your axis symmetry right here, right? So your axis symmetry. And so if this is, if this is an x-intercept, and remember the distances, remember your axis symmetry helps you to see the symmetry. So, so if this, if this x-intercept is one unit from the uh, axis symmetry, then the other one has to be one unit. And notice it is, four and two, okay? Now, notice all, all, all uh, these quadratic functions have a y-intercept. The problem is that this y-intercept is, I'm going to go ahead and write it here. The y-intercept is negative 16, but that's way below the graph. So we're not going to even worry about plotting that y-intercept. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't ask it here, because uh, it, was, it was too far down. It wasn't part of the graph. Uh, it wasn't part of this grid right here. Okay, now, so, so we have something that looks like this. And just do something like that, just like that, okay? Um, all right. And, and that'll be fine, because notice it says this, graph, graph your function, make sure to use the vertex and the x-intercepts, and I did, vertex, x-intercepts, and use the axis symmetry to make the graph look symmetric, okay? All right, okay, now let's talk about the range. So remember, the range is the set of y-coordinates, and so when we determine the range, and I could have done it here, by the way, for this part here, so in determining the range, remember the range is a set of y coordinates, so you're going from bottom up. So as I go from bottom up, I'm going from negative infinity all the way 
and this is the highest point, that's the maximum, and that y value is 2. Okay, so that's the largest y value is 2. So your range, your range is going to be from negative infinity to positive 2 with a bracket. Okay? All right, now they're asking this. Indi indicate the open interval in which the function is increasing and decreasing. Okay, so I want you to, I want you to think about this. I'm going to go ahead and use this one so I can write on. So here's 2, here's 4. So here's my graph, right? And remember, when, whenever we talked about increasing or decreasing, you go from left to right. And so you're talking about what's happening to those y values as you go from left to right. So as I go from left to right, notice that my y values are increasing. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, your y values are decreasing. So they're increasing here, and then they're decreasing here. So they're increasing from negative infinity to this x coordinate, to this x value here, which is uh, 3. So from negative infinity to 3, your y values are increasing. And then from 3 to infinity, from 3 to infinity, your y values are decreasing. So that's the way you got to think about that part, okay? So from here to here, from here to here, and if I go ahead and try and use a different color, I don't know if this is going to show up, but from here to here, your y values are decreasing, okay? All right, so, so they're increasing from negative infinity to this y value, which is... Um, 3. So negative infinity to 3, and then it's decreasing from 3 to infinity. So from 3 to infinity. All right? And that was it. So that is, that is the key to this worksheet.